Gain-of-function research has the potential to unleash a global pandemic that threatens the lives of millions. Yet this is the first time the issue has been discussed in a congressional committee. I'm sure each member of this committee, as well as the full Senate, can agree that we need stronger government oversight of how our tax dollars are being used to finance experimenting with mute, uh, with possibly fatal diseases. That was Senator Rand Paul during yesterday's first ever hearing on gain of function research aimed at finding the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Senator himself joins us now to discuss further. Welcome to the show, Senator Paul. Thanks for having me. Senator Paul, what were some of the highlights of this hearing? You know, I think the key was that all three scientists that we brought in, and these are esteemed scientists that have been interested in this issue for some time, all three of the scientists agree that the research that the United States was funding in Wuhan through the NIH was gain of function research, that this research was a dangerous type of research that should have been reviewed by the pandemic committee that reviews dangerous research, and that it wasn't. And that really what Dr. Fauci said directly in committee that the NIH does not fund gain of function in Wuhan and never has is an out and out lie. Also, when Dr. Fauci said that this uh, research was reviewed and found to be safe by experts, that was also a lie. This research was never reviewed. The panel or the committee set up to review gain of function research never reviewed this. The other thing that came to light from yesterday's hearing is that the pandemic review committee, the one that looks at dangerous viruses and this type of research, um, meets in secret. We don't know their members and they don't release their minutes. I mean, this is absurd. I can't imagine anybody justifying that the members are secret and they don't release their minutes. But they also only review your research if you flag it for them. They don't go looking for gain of function research. They don't research anybody that's working with a dangerous virus. They review it if you opt into the program. So it's an opt in, not a uh, mandatory review. They also don't have the force of law or the force to remove your funding if they find it to be dangerous. So there's all kinds of problems here. One of the things the three scientists came together and all agreed on, they all wrote their statements independently, was that maybe this should be overseen similar to the way we oversee nuclear technology. Um, you know, we don't let any uh, American just sort of pick up and start selling centrifuges to uh, Iran or to Russia or to China to enrich uh, uranium. It's, it's not legal to sell these weapons that could create nuclear bombs. Well, maybe it shouldn't be legal to sell things that construct a virus that could kill a million people. And we lead in all the technology and our taxpayers have paid for a lot of it. So I see no reason why we shouldn't have more oversight. Speaking of Dr. Fauci, we had him on the show last week and I, I asked him about gain of function research and here's what he said to us. There's a lot of misconception about gain of function as a broad general category, as opposed to in a specific situation to examine whether there or not the benefit for understanding more about the evolution of these outweighs any risks. And the risks that are taken are under the guardrails that I'm talking about. Uh, you know, I, I think we can all agree that experimenting, that tr trying to make more lethal these viruses is, is concerning anyway. But, you know, what do you make of, of Fauci's attempt to kind of get around it by saying, like, no, the technical exact thing you're talking about, that's not what we're doing, it's something else? I think the reason for it is, is that I think deep down he feels a moral culpability for this pandemic. He realizes that there's a very good chance that it came from the lab. And if it did come from the lab and it came out of research that we were financing, ultimately he and his decision making uh, should be judged in reviewing the history of where this pandemic came from. But he hasn't been honest. I mean, one of his chief critics was the scientist yesterday, Dr. Richard Ebright, who's been an editor of a uh, scientific magazine for scientific journal for more than a decade, has peer reviewed uh, more than 170 articles in peer reviewed journals. And he said that without question that uh, Dr. Fauci was untruthful, that this was gain of function research, that even the NIH has admitted this. There's a letter from a Dr. Taberic in which he says, well, yes, of course this was. And we indicated and defined it anything that increased the, uh, the transmissibility by more than tenfold was gain of function. And this actually increased the transmissibility by 10,000 
fold. So uh, without question, this was gain of function research. And it was research that should have been known from the very beginning. They took a virus that has 15% mortality and they mixed it together with an S protein from unknown bat viruses taken from a bat cave. So what they did is they took a virus that's pretty deadly and not very transmissible. And they said, hey, wonder if we put new S proteins on from an unknown virus, if we can make it more infectious. And they did, they made it 10,000 times more infectious. So they were monkeying around with mother nature, trying to make viruses that are already known to be deadly, more infectious. Um, if that's not gain of function, I don't know what is, but I, I think that Fauci's losing this war in the sense that he's been dishonest with the American people and, and we've lost a great deal of trust in public health because of him. Um, the reason it's important in getting to the truth isn't so much to punish him, although I think he, he should be punished for lying, but it's really the danger of another pandemic. One of the scientists yesterday says that in looking at the samples of people uh, early on that got this infection that were working in that lab, they found trace elements of Nipah virus, N-I-P-A-H. This is a virus that has 60% mortality. So we now have indirect evidence that they've been doing experiments in that lab where the where the where this occurred with Nipah virus. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's research around the world on Marburg virus, which is also a 50, 60% deadly virus. And